I'm going to show you how making your own solar power system can be so easy, a caveman could do it. It really comes down to just hooking up these three basic components. In a minute, I'll show you how easy this is to do. We'll set up this small system that would be ideal for an RV, an overland rig, or even a small cabin just to power a few things. Once you learn how to make a small system, if you want to make a bigger system, it'll be easy. Because it's the same basic thing, you just add a few more components to scale up. The three main components are the solar panel, or panels, which of course generate electricity from the sun. You would think someone who is doing a solar video would choose a sunny day instead of a cloudy day, but this is what we have. Next is the battery or batteries. We could argue that the batteries are the heart of the solar power system. When you're running your components off of solar power, you're really running it off the batteries. The solar panels are there just to keep the batteries charged. They do that with the assistance of this little goodie, the charge controller. Solar panels create a variable amount of electricity as conditions change throughout the day. The charge controller takes that variable amount of electricity that the panel produces, turns it into a constant voltage, the right voltage needed to charge the battery. It allows the amperage to change. The amperage is the amount of electricity flowing, but it keeps that at more of a constant voltage. The more simple way to say that is the charge controller takes the electricity coming out of the panels and makes it more better for charging the battery. So the battery doesn't get destroyed and your components don't get destroyed. That's what the battery needs is electricity that's more better than what that produces. And that does that. To hook these together, we're gonna to need a few wires, but only a few. We'll start by hooking the battery up to the charge controller. By the way, if you don't have a deck over flatbed trailer, you're missing out because this makes an excellent outdoor workbench. It's really easy to know how to hook the battery up to the charge controller because they put a picture of a little battery on the charge controller for us. Wasn't that nice? Put the positive and negative, positive goes in here, negative goes in here. These lithium LiPo 4 batteries, which are what people are using now. Not everybody, but a lot of buddies. Because there are so many good reasons to use them, they have these bolt terminals. You put a ring terminal on the end of the wire. Use whatever your favorite wire stripping tool is. I have this fancy crimping tool, which can be bought inexpensively. Makes a nice solid crimp. That looks pretty nice, if I may say so myself. I already had a positive wire with a ring terminal on it. If you haven't figured it out already, we go from the negative on the battery to the negative on the charge controller, where the little battery sign is, and then positive to the positive side. But I highly recommend putting a fuse in between the battery and anything else. I like these little terminal fuses. It hooks on the top of the battery terminal and creates a new terminal over here to hook things to. When working with batteries, just make sure you don't touch anything metal or conductive between these two things. Why? Because bad things will happen if you do. It's like that button that says, whatever you do, don't push this button. That's what putting metal or some kind of a conductor between these two things would be like. It's like that button. Now we can hook the positive wire to the positive on the battery which is now the terminal on the fuse. On this end of the wire, we just strip it so it goes into the charge controller. I got this wire stripper a while back. I'm still not sure if I'm quite using it right, but the way I use it works. Then we put the positive end of the battery wire and the positive battery part of the charge controller. After you loosen the screw a little bit, you stick it in there and screw it in. What? It's what you do. Then you take the negative side, hook that pretty ring terminal job we just did up to the negative side. Of course, when you're hooking any wire up to a battery, you always want to be mindful of where the other end of the wire is, especially in relation to the end of the other wire. Because if they touch, or if they touch any conductor together, bad things will happen. So just make sure this is somewhere safe. Like what I did right there, that was careless. I kind of dropped it and it could have flung down, flung down, could have went down and hit that. We'll just hold on to this for a little bit. I want to make sure these are good and tight. And when we're using a wrench, 
where people sometimes get themselves into trouble using a wrench. They're tightening up one bolt and they hit the other one. Bad things will happen. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Now, of course, we hook the negative wire into the negative side of the charge controller. Whoa, it's coming alive. I must have done something right. It says the battery voltage is 13.2 volts. The light here says that's reading the battery. It's a 12 volt battery, but 12 volts is nominal. Batteries tend to run hotter than their stated voltage. That's normal. That was almost as easy as using jumper cables to jump start a car. You just go positive to positive, negative to negative. Ideally, or I would say necessarily, you should have an off switch between the battery and the charge control. Well, the, between the battery and anything. For the moment, I'm gonna skip the switch. I wanna keep this simple, focus on these three components. We'll get back to that later. If we have an emergency where we need to disconnect this because it's gonna cause the whole world to blow up, I do have my wire cutters here. I could just clip the wire. We're almost finished. Now we just plug in the solar panel. I'm not gonna use this one. I just put this one out because it was more photogenic for, well, we're doing a video here. So I'm gonna take this one out of the way. Instead, we're gonna use this portable folding 400 watt panel just because it's more better. It has more power. Have I ever mentioned how nice it is to have an eight foot by 20 foot bench? A solar panel, of course, is gonna have two leads, a positive and a negative, and they have these MC4 connectors, a male and a female end, which plug into each other. Of course, we're not gonna plug these into each other. We're gonna plug these into our components, like these extension cords, which also have MC4 connectors on them, which plug right into those. Uh, the question is, why do they call these MC4 connectors? It all goes back to when they invented these. The company that invented them wanted them to be successful. They wanted to sell a lot of them. They were sitting around the boardroom trying to figure out what should we call these things. Then somebody said, what about MC Hammer? He was successful. He sold a lot of records. Why don't we call these MC connectors? Then someone else said, yeah, but MC Hammer was kind of a one hit or maybe two or three hit wonder. Then he seemingly disappeared. We don't want that to happen to our product. And then someone said, what about MC X connectors? That didn't have a nice ring to it. They kept going through all these different things they could add to it. Then someone said MC4 connectors. They just thought that had a nice ring to it. That's what stuck. You're not buying this story, are you? Maybe you have some trust issues or something. Let's get back to this. The charge controller has a little picture of a solar panel on here, so we know where to hook the solar panel up. Since the charge controller doesn't have MC4 connectors to plug into, it only has places to put bare wire into, we need to have a wire that has a bare end on one side and an MC4 connector on the other. We could make those or buy them. You can buy MC4 connectors that you can crimp onto the wire, similar to what we did with the ring terminal, or you can buy wires like these that already have them on the ends. Either like these with a connector on each end or with a connector on one end and bare wire on the other, which typically come in a pair. You got the negative side and the positive side. If you had one of these that was ideally short, they have a male on one end, female on the other, you could cut that wire. Now you have the two bare end leads you need to go into the charge controller. Now if we take the leads from the solar panel, they just connect to the back and they are usually labeled. This one's positive. We'll plug that into our adapter wire into the positive side of the charge controller. Now the other one goes into the negative side, just like the battery side. It's positive to positive, negative to negative. Now we can hook this negative lead into the negative lead of the solar panel and complete the circuit. Look, something's happening. Now the solar panel light is lit up and the solar panel is charging the battery. That's it, we're done. Now if you wanna power something off of it, you just plug that into this part of the charge controller that has the light bulb on it. You have the positive here, the negative here. That can go directly into the power system on your RV or whatever it is you're powering. It doesn't have to connect to the charge controller. 
essentially what this is, is it's connecting it to the battery. So you can go directly to the battery, positive, negative, preferably through the fuse, and preferably through a switch. It's not a bad idea to have a switch on the positive wire going out to the panels too. A nice thing about the MC4 connectors is you can disconnect and reconnect them quick and easy. They're like apples for a snack, they're quick and easy. You can plug in an extension. We'll take the solar panel out here where maybe it'll get some sun if it comes out. And these plug in quick and easy, they only go in one way. This won't go into that and this won't go into that, so you don't have to worry about crossing positive and negative. This is all there is to these basic components of solar. I've been using these watt cycle batteries for almost a year now. I have a nice bank of them set up on my solar power system. Watt cycle just sent me this new one, which is 280 amp hours, which is a lot, and it's the smart edition. The battery has Bluetooth. I can connect to the battery with their app on my phone. It's showing the battery at 42% charge. It's charging at 64.1 watts on this cloudy day. And it'll take 54 hours for this battery to fully charge. The reason it's gonna take so long to charge this is because it's, I was gonna say a cloudy day, but as soon as I start to say that, the sun comes out. Now with a little bit of partial sun hitting it, it's charging at 221 watts, which will take it 15 hours to charge. Still, it's going to take that long for that 400 watt panel to charge this because it's such a big battery. Not in size, but compared to this 100 amp hour deep cycle lead acid battery, which is a big battery, this is almost three times the capacity and probably close to the same weight, if not less. Imagine if you had this in your trolling boat or your RV or wherever you need a whole bunch of power. Imagine if you were to hook a battery like this up to your trolling motor, and if you have enough room on your boat, put a solar panel on there to help keep this charged. Think of how much longer you could extend your fishing range, which might make your wife unhappy if you stay out fishing that long, but she's probably already unhappy because you went fishing that day instead of staying home and cleaning out the gutters like she asked you to. But at least you got to go fishing for that long. I really like this smart battery where I can quickly check the status of it on my phone. And if you're out there trolling, you could check it on your phone, see how much time you have left before you have to go back to wherever you have to go back to. I'm just keeping this simple today. I'm not gonna go into components like inverters, which would turn this into household current. I've noticed when people are trying to learn solar, it's not uncommon for them to get flooded with too much information. And for a lot of people, that information's coming at them in a language they don't understand yet. Charge controller, inverter, combiner box, voltage, amperage, watts, all these words that people don't yet know what they mean. When I built my system, I had a couple people giving me a whole bunch of information to try to digest. One of the reasons I was able to digest it and build my own system is because I already knew how these three components work because I built a system like this years ago. I think by knowing how these three components work, that gave me an advantage in learning the rest. I don't know how much interest there's gonna be in this on this channel. This has been more of a forestry channel. As a forestry channel, I often talk about the tools I use in forestry, like chainsaws. Solar power has become a game changer for me. It's a tool that allows me to spend more time on my forest land and run a, run a what am I running? Run a YouTube channel from out here in my forest. If there's enough interest in this in future videos, we can go deeper down the rabbit hole. One technical thing I should get into, if you look at the back of your solar panel, there should be a plaque on there. Look at the maximum voltage and amperage your panel can produce. Just make sure that doesn't exceed the maximum voltage and amperage that your charge controller can receive. And if you're building a larger system, make sure the amperage that the charge controller can put out does not exceed the amperage that the battery can take which a small system like this, you typically don't have to worry about it with a battery like this. Those numbers are all easy to find. I'll put a link in the description for the battery and the charge controller, some of the tools and components I used, if I can find them and if I remember. Now I'm gonna shut up before I start talking about wire gauge, the size of wires you should use. All the other things about solar are very simple. 
We just need to learn one thing at a time. Today, we're keeping it simple with these three components.